In today's video, my desktop speakers are way cooler than yours. That is, of course, until you make some of your own. Let me show you how. If you happen to be a 3D printing enthusiast or even a content creator, you have undoubtedly noticed just how quiet the various maker brands have gotten over these past several quarters. Presumably, this spells trouble for the traditional review circuit, so get ready for some clip shows. This channel, on the other hand, puts the emphasis on projects, with or without an unboxing segment, and the maker spirit doesn't lie idle, so today I'll be replacing my benchtop speakers with a pair of miniature line arrays. In the wild, you'll typically spot these at concerts, either flown in a J arrangement or even ground stacked to cover a smaller venue with an output somewhere in the neighborhood of 100Hz through 20kHz. And while using a long throw loudspeaker array in the near field may seem a tad misguided, you can phase the individual drivers to focus on a single point, either by delaying the signal by the inverse of the distance to the listener, or by physically arranging the speakers into an arc around the listener. Commonly referred to as a focused array, this arrangement creates a hyper-localized field of acoustic focus, where the sum of all the individual wavefronts is grouped without any interference, or any of the comb filtering anomalies otherwise come into a line source instead offering a virtual headphone-like experience with exceptional clarity within the listening bubble and a steep high-end roll-off everywhere else. Introducing the Micromodular. This is the fundamental building block of just about any miniature line array you could imagine. It uses a single 2-inch balanced mode radiator from Tectonic in what is essentially an extended mid-base shelf alignment to reproduce literally the same range of frequencies as the towering stacks you'll find at a concert. And to create a tiny listening bubble just forward of the workbench, I'll want to form a 70cm radius arc. This is done with couplers, not unlike the ones used in the full-size rigs, and I'll stack each line 8 segments tall. What's more, with the combined piston area of 16 drivers coupled to a single point in space, the array should reach as low as 80 Hz, nearly a full octave below the freer resonance of these little drive units. Okay! Let's make it happen, Cap! Yes, let's. And for this, I'm using the Bamboo Lab X1C along with the Prusa XL. The main bodies are being printed with PETG HF, with 100% solid walls, and some 40% gyroid infill for the thicker transitions along the ends. The folks over at Bamboo Lab have even sent me a few of these revised nozzle wipers to actually wipe the nozzle, which matters even here as I swap to an interface material for some clean undersides along the backs of these vent pieces. All things considered, the only new party trick I can't say I care for is what happens when you run out of filament and go to load in some more. Yeah, it's just this until you reboot the machine. And without any way to address this from the screen, the only workaround is to preload the AMS with as much filament as you'll need for the entire print job, then simply ensure that autofill is enabled. Across the way, I have the XL working on all the orange bits. This is by far my favorite orange PTG, and I'm printing with four perimeters all the way around, some 40% gyroid infill along the middle, and the same for the four legs, as well as the two wedges, this time in jet black. Anyhow, this is where I get to put everything together, and one of the things that I like about the Bamboo Lab filaments is how well the interface material works with flat undersides, especially over here with all these inset areas, or even over here forming little channels for the reusable adhesive. In any case, with all the supports removed, 24 threaded inserts make their way into each of the 16 enclosures for a total of 384 chunks of M3 brass embedded into about 4 kilos of plastic. Up next, some internal cable management, along with a thin gasket of reusable adhesive for the back panels to achieve a proper seal. The same along the front, and with the little drivers wired in, the last four screws complete the module. This is where I add some legs and begin stacking their array with the 700R couplers, which I have to say is actually rather fun. Kind of like those erector sets from back before you were a kid. Up next, some exterior cable management as I series parallel the stack down to 8 ohms and get it seated into position. The results are ostentatious and unapologetically so. Nevertheless, with everything wired into the amp, the microphone aligned with the focal point, and the DSP cleared out, the initial sweep returns a very close match to the predicted response. This is followed by an 80Hz high-pass filter and some equalization for a well-controlled extension clear through 18kHz. 
add a subwoofer, which for the time being will be the trihexa, delivering somewhat lean coverage from across the way, and there is our tentative frequency response. The only question now becomes, how do I demo a sound bubble? Well, here's one idea. Hi. Hi. This is the micromodular. Micromodular? Yeah, and okay. given that it's going to be rather difficult to convey to the audience, wherever they are, um, what the sound field actually does, I'm going to try something different. Put these on. Headphones. Yeah. Okay. So now you should be hearing, hopefully, what the audience is hearing. Okay. Can you? I can hear that. All right. The other one? I can hear that. Yes. All right. So before you get to hear these first ear, you're going to get to hear them like everybody else. And then I'm going to ask you for a comparison. How's that sound? All right. All right. So the sound field, the, the little sound bubble, is 70 centimeters away. So if you want to be dead set, well, actually, uh, we're going to put the microphone here. So you want to give it a tiny little bit of space. But roughly here is where you can expect the concentration of okay. the sound to be. So. Now you get to hold your own ears, so to speak, and you'll notice in <laughs> as you move your ears up and down and so forth, how you phase in and out of the bubble. Let's begin with the first track. How's that sound? Now try moving your ears up or down. Much further up, like maybe up to here versus down here. Oh, that's so weird. Is it? Everybody back. Oh, that was weird. I wonder if this is picking up the dog chewing. It's some good ASMR right there. Yeah, I can hear. All right, headphones off. Headphones off. Now I'm going to play the track again. And uh, your job this time around it's is to convey to the audience to how your experience that you're about to have differs from the experience that you've just had. I'm also shorter than you, so I gotta go up. Think that's about even? I'm trying to make sure that I can see roughly. Yeah, they all should be firing right at you. Pull my hair back behind my ears. All right. Ready? Ready. This is so odd. Because, like, I know what this track is supposed to sound like. You can stand up. I know, but if I just move, like, it's very weird just how much of a difference two inches is. <laughs> yeah. Now, these only play down to about 80 hertz just like the real thing and everything down from there is being powered by trihexa sitting over there in the corner oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep forgetting that it's hiding over there he's big should move the microphones back down so they can hear it yeah mm -hmm. 
Here you go. the headphones translate to what you're hearing without them? The headphones are obviously going to change a little bit of it, but I don't know, they're weird. can't phase a subwoofer like it quite as easily. Not a room like that, no. Not in cubicle. That, that'd be something that, that you'd have to um, drill into the chair. <laughs> Alright, tell you what. Do you want to play some copyrighted music and then give me your final verdict? Yeah. Alright, have it. It's gonna be sleep choking, we both know right. that. Get after it. Oh. Turn it up the rest of the way. Ah! <laughs> How's oh. the punch? to say this this is probably the weirdest thing that I've ever sat here to listen to yeah 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 for the I don't even know 10. what the hell they are 10 out of 10 these are these focused are, arrays they are fantastic for right here I like them yeah hmm. okay well they're gonna be here for a while they're very ostentatious Though I will say the trihexa is not keeping up so no Hint, hint, hint. Oh, is right, because the moment they go to rip on the maker brands for hunkering down in silence, Bamboo turns up at the door with a new flagship. That'll be some much appreciated build volume, roughly in the neighborhood of the XL, which is my current go-to machine for practical size prints like these custom drawers for the shelves directly behind me. Then, not to be outdone, Flash Forge is like, hey, we have this brand new AD5X, so that'll be the next couple of projects. Speaking of which, the micromodular proves a functional exercise in how line arrays operate. And in addition to the 700 R couplers for desktop use, I've also modeled up some 2000 R couplers for midfield applications like a center channel or even a floor standing array, and some parallel couplers for building out a flat soundbar. So, whether you're constructing a miniature sound stack or a giant Atmos ring, the micromodular seems like a good place to start. What's more, these little BMRs are only $10 a piece, fitting even larger builds well into the hobbyist budget. Anyway, don't forget to rate the video as you see fit. Chime in with your two cents about the demo, subscribe if you're so inclined, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers! <laughs>